All right, I said in a previous video I wasn't gonna do this because I was too scared to do it, but I think I decided to be a little bit less scared because I'm not gonna get any farther unless I do this. What I'm actually scared of is failure of not going farther, not damaging a Jeep. EVGA is proud to announce their all-new XR1 OBS certified 4K capture card. Record at 1080p60 while you game at 4K60 with HDR with advanced pass-through mode that allows you to switch to 144Hz refresh rate at the press of a button, meaning no longer do you need to disconnect or disable to get the full capabilities of your display. To see the full list of capabilities and configurations, click the EVGA link in the description below. Okay, so we're gonna do this in a couple of parts. Um, I'm going to make an attempt at lapping, well, that sounded weird because of the glass, huh? lapping this uh, 3090 GPU. Now here's the thing, this is not the Kingpin card. This is one of the For the Win 3 cards that we initially started uh, all this overclocking crap with last year. And uh, you know, there's some things. I've, I've talked to some of the XOC guys, including Vince himself, Bearded Hardware. I know for a fact that the new Galax cards that are at the top of the list, there's like three or four of them now, uh, which I suspect is actually more or less one or two cards being passed around the community. But regardless, I digress. Um, I mentioned a long time ago, actually, I think it was during the live stream that Steve and I did uh, when I was at EVGA and Steve was back at his headquarters. I mentioned that these letters on the die, specifically on the 3090s and 3080s, are much more raised than they are on previous generations. And that's like etched in there or something. And Vince told me, he's like, oh yeah, absolutely can the height of those letters affect your mount when you're dealing with extreme temperatures of LN2 and you know minus 140, 150 degrees Celsius. Um, so what a lot of the XOC guys will do to get to that next level of getting the perfect mount that will allow the paste to withstand the super cold temperatures without cracking is at the very least lap the die to remove these letters. So what I'm gonna do right now is just me taking you along for a ride of a technology, technology, no tech, technique, that's it, the other tech, uh, that I kind of came up with in my head on how to lap this with minimal um, damage, I guess you will. Here's the thing, that is the actual dye that's exposed. It's not, it doesn't have an IHS or a heat spreader on top of it, that is the dye. So if I screw this up, this is a goner. So that's why I'm at least gonna try this on a 3090 for the wind. And you might be wondering like, Jay, why not use one of the old cards to practice? Well, the problem is the old cards dies are about a quarter the size of this one. So in order to get the technique right, I've gotta tr try it on something roughly the same size. I could have also grabbed a 2080 Ti or something like that, which has a s almost similar size die. It's a little bit smaller. I'm just figuring at this point, I might as well at least give it a shot and see what we've got here. So here's here's my technique that I'm that I'm kind of coming up with. Most people I've been told are just using a sanding block on this to at least get the numbers down. My problem are the letters and numbers and, and the etching. My problem is I don't want to cause a bigger problem of causing some uneven sanding. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the bottom portion of an EK water block here. I'm going to lap this so I know this is perfectly flat. I'm then going to adhesive either through double-sided scotch tape if it'll hold well enough. Um, if not, then I might actually do spray adhesive on here. I'm then going to adhesive sandpaper to this and I'm going to use this to lap my die. So I'll turn this into a sanding block that I know is as flat as possible. The problem with sanding blocks is a lot of times they're squishy in some aspects. So that means I could start sanding the edges down and not get it flat. That would cause me a bigger problem. As I look at the, uh, the pot and I don't have it here. Actually, Nick, can you go grab the pot? The mounting pot. <laughs> this LN2 pot is solid copper. And if you look at it, you can see the only outline you see are the letters. Oftentimes you can see an outline of the actual die, like a square. And the reason why we don't see that is I'm not getting this pot, even though it's soft copper, to get a full mount all the way to the edges, which is causing me to have a hard limit right now of about 2655 on how far I can go on this, on this GPU. And those Galax cards that are at the top, like I said, all the XOC guys are basically saying those are lap, that's, that's a lap die, at least one of them is a lap die, and that's what's allowing them to go extreme cold temperatures, which is allowing them even higher voltages and higher core clocks of almost 2,900 megahertz on Port Royal, over three gigahertz already achieved on some of the other HW bot type stuff that they do. So as you can see, they're saying it matters. But this is, this is another clue here that these raised letters are possibly causing me a problem too of not getting good um, mount all the way to the edge. I've showed before, I'll get like a circle and then the edges all have thicker dye on, or thicker grease on them, which is causing me to have bad mount problems and keeping me from being able to go any farther than I am because it starts to get hot spots on the die and then it crashes. 
So those letters are also, uh, that are literally being transferred to the copper are telling me that even though I am mounting it as tight as I can, Nick was sketched. I basically took that C-clamp and put my weight on it on how hard I was pushing it against the co this copper pot to try and get a good mount. Nick was like, I can't believe the card is surviving. Cause remember I am literally screwing it down, not on this one, this one doesn't have all MLCCs. So at least I'm able to, to get my, when I push the C-clamp on here, it pushes directly on the MLCCs. I just gotta make sure I don't crush them when I'm doing this. But I think by doing this method, I may not have to go quite so tight on that. But because when we do tighten down on these screws right here, the bow, the, the board does bow slightly. Ooh, that crunching sound. The board does bow slightly which can actually cause us to have a bad mount in the center. So I'm just gonna be using the C-clamp to flatten that back out until I get custom backplate made to hold this all down like some of the other guys are. So without showing you guys all the process of lapping, I've showed this a million times. Uh, maybe I'll just have Phil do some B-roll here of me doing the process here on this, and then we'll take you along for the ride of doing it to the actual card. And if this all works and the card still posts, then we'll do it to you. So here's my little homemade sanding block. Looks kind of crappy on the edge here. I just tried to trim it and I made it look all ugly, but that's okay, that doesn't matter. So I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and squished down on the tape. I don't know, okay, let's just. The letters are gone already. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, like they're there, but you don't feel them. Okay, well. It's also 2000 grit, so it's not gonna be taking off a lot of material, but I obviously I don't wanna go scratching into the dial all, <laughs> all hard, you know? I feel like we're getting the number or the letters off of there is like step one. I'm also making sure I don't knock anything off of the substrate, like around the PCB, around the GPU. The thing is, I don't know where it's like, you know what? You've gone too deep, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause the letters, I can still see the letters there. Like they're etched in there, right? So you're gonna see them no matter what, I think. But wow, that's so smooth. Cause here's the thing. When they cut these wafers, right? You can still see the machine marks where they like slice it. There's like a machine that just kind of like, like cuts it all like flat, right? Or sands it or whatever. Um, all those machine marks are gone now too. And the letters, can't fill them with the fingernail. Well, maybe slightly. Okay, a little more. I'm starting to think maybe 1500 would have been the right grit but I'd rather start sh like with a nice, super fine grit, finishing grit, rather than be like, you know what? 600 just dug right in. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna mount the pot to it, turn it on, make sure it boots, and then uh, we'll look at the mount afterwards. But I already lapped this pot. If you guys didn't catch that video, that was uh, last week. So if you guys haven't looked at the leaderboard, we actually beat our last score. Remember 18,018, look what we got. We broke 18,000, I was all happy. We got 18,091 just by going up one more, one more boost bin. So we went from 2625 to 2640. And we were working on 2655 when I went, you know what, enough's enough. We need to uh, probably do this. Cause I was dealing with pace cracking at around minus 145. And sometimes if the, if the test crashes and there's LN2 in the pot, even if I'm blowing a torch at it, it still runs away and then it cracks the pace. And we're constantly doing pace healing and I'm trying to at least get to a point to where I can get those first three or four runs to truly count. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it even boots. Hey, we got video, look at that. That's a good sign. I wanna look at the spread. Now here's the thing, the spread definitely changes over the, the cold. So right now it's still gonna be super gloopy. So it's gonna be hard, gloopy, gloppy, <laughs> blobby. It's gonna be hard to see how well the spread really works. Um, when the pace gets super cold, and it thickens up, it makes a really good imprint on how the mount was. I'm not gonna have that right now, but I feel like this will give me a pretty good idea of what to expect. And one of the things I'm gonna do too before I do this is I'm actually gonna throw the card in our ultrasonic cleaner, get it nice and clean, because there's so much crud on it from all the tape and the insulation material and all that. So I need to get the card nice and clean before I do this. Look how far to the edges that went. <laughs> Oh, wow. Without even using the clamp. In fact, here's a perfect comparison. Here's the 3090 that we just did. Look at that, it's all So I'll probably clean this card too, obviously. You see how far to the edges that went without the clamp? Here is what my Kingpin 3090 has been looking like with the clamp. Compare the two. Do you see this? Do you see the actual circular pattern in the center with how thick the, the thermal grease is around the edges? Compared to that one. 
we might finally have gotten somewhere. All right, so here's my nice and cleaned off Kingpin uh, 3090. This is the same exact card that we've been using for uh, our test now for what, over 200 runs or so. This is the same exact card we hit 2640 on. So I now will be able to have a pretty good, and, and that spreadsheet I did, uh, well, that Nick filled out as we were to, doing our testing is awesome because now I know exactly where I can pick up and not have to really waste any any effort here. One thing I wanna point out though, and I'm not sure if, if Phil can get it on camera, I'll try and get, get it right for him. You can see there's some like slight pitting and scratching on the die. I think that's just from the constant remounting. Like little bits of debris can kind of get in there sometimes when you put on the thermal paste and if you're squishing it down real tight with the pot. So I think this is gonna have a lot of additional benefit to it than just lapping it to get a better mount. I think we're gonna make the whole surface a lot smoother than it was. So here goes nothing. And yes, this is still scary. Oh, wow. It feels different than the other one too. Like it feels uneven. <laughs> wow, you know what's funny about that? So if you look at the standing pattern on there, see how it's like an L, it's like mm -hmm. two sides. That's the side that I'm constantly getting the most thermal paste on. Like the opposite side, I should say. So it, I was always getting this L kind of a pattern. I'm like, why can't I get this to mount right? And I even mentioned in my last video, I'm like, I think these two were too tight or something because it wasn't going even, which is crazy. So maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this die isn't flat. Like I don't think any of them are perfectly flat, but I think this one was like more off than expected. So after a Sam Pap Papper? Sam, Sam Papper. Papper. After a Sam Papper replacement. Yeah, that's way better. Look at that. So you can see all the, the sanding marks are all even all the way across it now. This one was like really not flat and the letters were very raised versus the other one. Now let's talk about something real quick before we go over there and see what the results are uh, with the LN2. I'm not pushing down on this. I'm, I'm trying to keep even pressure on it so it doesn't like tilt like that. But this is a pretty heavy piece of metal. It's copper, that's nickel plated copper and it's pretty weighty. So I'm letting the weight of it kind of do its thing as I'm keeping my finger in the center as much as I can. And I'm only allowing it me to push down hard enough to make sure it doesn't lift up or tilt. And then I'm just doing circles, opposite directions, back and forth like this. This is my first time doing this. I'm sure XOC guys that have been doing this forever could chime in on what grit they use, whether they use something a little more coarse, or if, whether or not they think 2000 grit's plenty. I think we're gonna find out on my own right now if it's plenty. I was really surprised to see how not flat this die was with that initial pattern of it being an L shape. It just makes me feel a little less crazy because I was like, I know I can mount a pot and why does it keep giving me like this off-centered kind of a thing? And then when I would finally get it nice and tight in the center, why was I getting a ring all around it of it not touching anything? Also too, I'm gonna go ahead and address this now. Some of you might be wondering like, well, if this is so beneficial, why don't the manufacturers do it? That's because this is, only to eke out like that last couple of percent of performance that are related to the extreme temperatures and the way that thermal paste reacts in the extreme temperatures, specifically the extreme thermal paste like the K uh, KPX or the Kingpin Extreme or the pink uh, Cryonaut, these that are designed to go like down to minus 200 plus temperatures cause a lot of physical changes in terms of the, um, the gap of air that can happen between the dye and the pot, if thermal paste gets too thick right there, it can crack. And so by doing this and getting it as flat as possible, it extremely eliminates, by extremely eliminates, it, it extremely reduces the likelihood of cracking. Something no one will ever experience at any of the temperatures people operate, even on water. So that's not something the manufacturers need to be concerned about. So I've been trying to be healthier and I'm bringing my pre-made lunches to work now, but I just remembered we don't have a microwave and I have no way to heat it up. All right, so Nick is over here filling up some thermoses. I already did a test boot on this to make sure that it gives me a video signal. So that's a win. And I've got everything ready to go. So I've got my clamp on here, which is not putting a lot of pressure on it, just enough to make sure we keep nice flush contact in the center of the die. In fact, I don't even wanna tighten that down anymore. So. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, I guess, just let Phil maybe do some B-roll of this because I have a superstition that this microphone and its transmitter affects my overclocks. So we're going to do the same process we always do. Bring down the pot temp, torch it back to warm, bring it down again, torch it to warm again, bring it down and then, whoa, not unplug stuff, and then do our runs because that hot cold, hot cold actually gets the pot ready faster than just letting it sit there and soak. So I'm gonna turn off the mic and we're gonna see if I can beat 18,091 today. If 
I can, I can go a little bit higher. I might beat that Dan OCP or Dan Cop guy, whatever his name is. The German dude. So I'm actually gonna take the cart apart and check them out. We weren't, we were getting about halfway through the run on 2655, um, but unfortunately I wasn't careful as I was undoing the screw and I accidentally knocked this guy off right here. This belongs there, well, like that. This card is done for now. It's, a, no, don't lose it. Although I'm sure Vince has more. Where is it? Okay. I'm not gonna do my repair method that you guys have seen me do before. Anyone with, a, true soldering skills like Lewis Rossman or anyone that's got a magnifying glass and flux and all the proper crap to do that can get that back on right there. So I'm gonna be sending this probably back to Vince to repair. Um, Vince will be able to repair that no problem, but let's go ahead and check out the mount. I do have another Kingpin card that I'll probably just go ahead and lap real quick and test. And I will let you guys wonder if it worked or not because we need to end this video. So if I go ahead and pull that straight up, we're getting a much better mount. It has a little bit of that goopiness because when you pick it up, the suction, right? But I can tell you right now, it's getting to the edges better. But I feel like on the second card that I do this to right now, I'm going to probably lap it with something a little bit uh, coarser grit, if you will. So that's where we're gonna go ahead and end it. I know it's a little disappointing to not be like, oh my God, Jay beat his score in this video. The lapping part was a success. The careless part of knocking off a capacitor, utter failure. This is the risk you take, I guess, when you start getting in a hurry and aren't careful. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. And if you wanna know if I actually end up beating my score, just periodically check the uh, Port Royal Hall of Fame. <laughs>